Well, greetings, friends, and welcome to the Periodic Table of History. This is where we study history in four dimensions, and what we're going to look at is the first missionary journey of Paul. It is probably the time period when Christianity actually becomes a religion. So let's look at our time axis right here. We have Adam going down to Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the flood, and then Abraham, then the time of King David, about 1000 B.C., when we fast forward down here in Israel, we'll get to Jesus and the Apostles, and now we're going to look at the life of Paul. Specifically, we're going to look at about 46 to 49 A.D. 46 to 48 is when the first missionary journey happened. So let's zoom in here and take a helicopter view of the first missionary journey of Paul. It all starts right down here at the Church of Antioch, and that's in Syria. So it's really fun to see the mountains in the area that Paul probably knew quite well. This is his second home. A real pretty mountain is right over here on the left side of the screen. And then Paul's birthplace is Tarsus, and it's a little bit north of here, right, right up here. Jerusalem is to the south of here, back this way. And we can see the start place and the end place of Paul's first missionary journey. The start place is in red and the end place is in, in blue. We'll look at the start at first. So I highly encourage you to read Acts 13, 14, or else just follow along here. It's really instructive no matter what, but you get a lot of the detail of the stories in the Bible. And Acts really gives us the narrative of what was going on with the apostles, kind of uh, pulls everything all together. And if we want to learn past this time period, you have to get into Eusebius and others. Well, here is the Church of Antioch, and it's Antioch in Syria versus Antioch up in Turkey. We'll see that just in a little bit, that there are two of them. So not to be confused, the Church of Antioch is right here, a little bit north of Israel, and this is the Mediterranean Sea. We start off with Paul, Barnabas, and John. And the three of them make their way across this sea to Cyprus. So let's just take a look at Cyprus just a little bit. And in Acts, that brings us up to Acts 13, 5. Chapter 13, verse 5. You can see the mountain ranges over here. A couple of them, one in the north and one in the south of Cyprus. This is what the topography looks like here. And this looks like the perfect bay to run into if you are making a ship journey. It's kind of curved so it can capture your voyage. The scriptures tells us that Paul went all around this island and preached all over. So uh, we can just follow the red and we can see a lot of the cities are right here in the south. And Paul definitely would have been through here. He would have known these mountains, looked up at them. The very next story that we hear about is about a sorcerer named Bar-Jesus. And the Bible also writes him down as Elimus. It says he is a sorcerer, and you can look up that story of what happens in Acts 13 around verse 6. But you can see that these are the mountains. If we, if we zoom in to where Paul was and then change our perspective a little bit, you can see that uh, this is what Paul would have seen. Something like this, looking up at these very mountains. Now we'll change our perspective just a little more because we're going to travel a little farther in the Mediterranean, go up to the shore of Turkey. You can see Turkey there in the distance. And we still have three people, Paul, Barnabas, and John. So in Acts 13, verse 13, John departed. So now we're from three people down to two. And this is the view, Perga in Pamphylia. You can see that there's a really nice area back there. I could. I can imagine this area as a resort area. 
So by some method, Paul made it across these mountains. I can see a couple ways to get across, but I just marked this red line over here. We don't know if that's his exact path. He might have come up this way uh, as well. But this looked like a very well-traveled path. And so these are a lot of the sites that Paul would have seen on his first adventures. Paul may have come by this lake, and we're getting up here into one of his very first adventures. He's trying to convince the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah. And so he finds a synagogue right up here in Antioch of Pisidia. See, remember, this is the Antioch in Turkey versus the Antioch church that's in Syria. So this is the very place where Paul and Barnabas went to the synagogue and they were not well received. So they were expelled. But you can see the the mountains over here in the background and and so on. Quite a bit of narrative that goes on about that. If you've ever wondered where were the books of the Bible written, well, there's one of them. So you can remember here, uh, Paul is now well acquainted with rejection, and then he proceeds to write Galatians. So if you were doing this study and you wanted to get deeper into it, you could read Galatians right here. You can look at the views around here. This is what Paul would have been looking at while he was writing one of the most popular books of the Bible. Incredible to my intellect. So we'll just travel a little farther. This may be the path of least resistance if Paul was taking the path of least resistance and going over the most populated areas where he could come across the most people and tell the most people that Jesus is the Messiah. If he went up this way, then, then he would have come up to Iconium some way. And now that brings us to Acts 13, 51. Now this is a city where Paul learned that there was a plot to stone him. And this is his view. You can see these markers in the background. Here are the two prominent markers that I'd be looking at if I was in this area. The mountain over here. That's more on the north side, and the mountain over here more on the south side. And this is one of the more interesting stories in this first missionary journey, because the crippled man was healed. And the people here worshipped the Greek gods, and so they figured the gods had come down among men. So they called Barnabas Zeus, and they called Paul Hermes or Mercurius. And you can read that in Acts 14, the first few verses. Well, through the whole narrative, Paul is there to show people that Jesus is the one true living God, so he gets into a shuffle with the people of this city. Oh, and look, this is a pretty nice city with this hill right here. Kind of an oasis in the desert. But the people revolt against Paul right after calling them gods. And Paul is stoned, but he isn't killed. That happens all right here in Lystra. So let's move on and look, look out on the horizon just a little bit more. Here's a zoomed out view of this area at a little bit higher altitude. 
Uh, when we get high enough, we can see right across there Paul's starting place and the church of Antioch in Syria, the Mediterranean there, birthplace of Saul, and then we can see that Paul made his way over here to Derby. So when Paul grew up, he would have seen these mountains from the other side. See, there's the birthplace of Paul. I'll just click around it. He would have seen these mountains. But he made it this far, and instead of going home, he said, no, I've met a lot of friends. I've got to encourage them. So let's look at the way back. It's right along here. He went back to Lystra. That's in Acts 14.21. So this would have been a good landmarker that he went around this mountain right here making his way back to Lystra, and then even farther, he goes back to Iconium, places where he was very well rejected. But remember, this took two years to complete this journey. 46 A.D. to 48 A.D., So we're back in this same place that Paul was rejected originally, Antioch in Turkey, Acts 14.21 also. And the blue line here is an efficient choice that Paul may have made. The Bible just specifies he went to the land of Pisidia, Acts 14, 24. But I can see a couple routes here. The route over here in blue that's marked would have a lot of water. It would have been a good way to get back. But also, we know that Paul returned to Perga, so he may also have gone over here to the left in this direction. But at either rate, this is the land of Pisidia. It's a little bit out of reach than this more southern area in Turkey. So the mountain range creates a division. Well, Paul goes to Perga, and then he must have gotten a little bit better fare in Atalia, and that would be a little better boat fare to get back to Syria. And notice the modern rendition, Antalya is the same city as Atalia, Atalia of the Bible. But now we are on the Mediterranean again, and Paul makes his way by boat around this southern side of Turkey. You can see Crete over here, where he had visited on the way out. You can see the mountain ranges there, and if we zoom in here, we can also see oh, a little bit of what Paul saw on the way back. If he was down here close to the water, he would have looked to his north, and he would have seen the mountains over there. That's what Turkey looks like from the sea. So Paul and Barnabas are now sailing back to Syria. You can see the mountains off in the distance. Paul's second home, if he could call a place home. And now we're at the year 48 and Acts 14.26. What would Paul have been thinking here? His life has changed forever because of that first missionary journey. And he reports back to the church at Antioch. 
Now I zoomed out because Paul got back to Antioch at the year 48, and then the Council of Jerusalem happened in 49 AD. And if you recall, the Council of Jerusalem is the time when Peter and Paul were at odds with each other over the role of the Gentiles versus the Jews. That was a huge controversy at the beginning of the church. But remember, Paul went around here to the synagogues. Some people believed, some people didn't, and that's the very foundation of Christianity. The people that did believe that Jesus was the Messiah using the scriptures of the Torah and the Tanakh uh, came to that conclusion, split up. There became a, a Gentile Jewish church and that becomes the very seed of everything that unfolds after that. The rise of the Catholic Church, the split of the East and the West, Roman Empire, and also the Church was split into the Byzantine Church and the Roman Catholic Church. And later you have the Protestant Reformation, etc., etc. So this is the birthplace itself, and we can zoom in there and just take a, a better look at it. Red is outbound, blue is coming back. And this is what forms the basis of Christianity that we have today. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope it showed a realism that we don't usually get to see if we don't travel over to this region. And also, when you're reading the pages of the Bible, you might not understand the places that they're talking about. So I think this journey was helpful for all of us so that we could really see the tangibility of what Paul did on his first missionary journey. Thanks a lot for watching. It's always free to subscribe, share, thumbs up, and comment. And may the peace of the Lord be on you, and have a great week. I'll see you next time.